Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our celebration of the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today we're going to begin with two uh, verses of All That Is Hidden, verses 1 and 4. Jesus, you emptied yourself to become human. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the good shepherd who leads us to everlasting life. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will appear in glory at the end of time. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We make our prayer here today through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, it is my way. Is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from wickedness he has committed, he does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing, do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interest, 
but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> a, reading, <clears throat> a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave him the same order, and he said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you. Tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not change your minds and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's a strange gospel, but I think one we can relate to. Because at one time or another in our lives, I'm sure we said yes to a parent, a boss, a spouse, but didn't follow through. And maybe on another time we said no, and then we went away and thought about it, and then did what was asked. The quick, crucial question in the gospel, which, is most, which decision is most typical of, you, of us today? Jesus was well aware of the foibles of human nature. He uses the story to show that transformation is possible, that even minor sinners like ourselves can become saints in his kingdom while still here even on earth. We can become people of integrity with just a little help from Jesus. Each one of us is a mixture of saint and sinner. Our life's goals as Christians is to say yes more often and to say no to the Lord. And our cho choices are born of prayer and reflection, Eucharist and so on. Uh, these, helps, uh, these help us uh, in, the, in return the influence of our actions and choices until the final moment of stepping forth through the door to the kingdom. Saying the right words is never enough. Remember that old adage, Actions speak louder than words. Even with, with the Lord, words are not enough. There's a great story told of a, um, a, a, a officer in the Red Army who asked a Christian, as they asked if anybody was a Christian as they went down the line of new recruits. And they knew at that time to be a, a Christian during the Second World War was uh, almost instant death. No, each recruit said, as the officers neared the final person, he knew what he would answer because his grandmother told him about Jesus and he, the, the uh, recruit
recruit had accepted him as his savior. Although he was not allowed to attend church, his grandmother had taught him well. Soon the officer was in front of him and he said, are you a Christian? And he answered, yes, sir, I am. Then come with me, the officer said. He followed the man uh, to the camp kitchen. You'll work here, they told him. You're out of combat. We need you, we need you here. You are a Christian, and we, and we know that you won't steal, so we'll put you in front of the kitchen. I think it's so important to remember that always, always, there's room in God's mercy for a continual conversion. A no to God today never has to be our last word to him. So as you begin each morning this week, ask the Lord to help you choose virtue. Help ask him to help me to do the right thing today, to say yes to the Lord as though this was your last day. The human heart is so fickle. Recall the parable. Sometimes we react impulsively rather than thoughtfully. We get sidetracked. Work on your personal transformation this week. And at our Eucharist here today, ask the Lord to help you say yes just for today and to mean it. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God guides the humble to justice and teaches them the way. And so in humility we bring our need. For the church, that the Holy Spirit may bind us with the same love, uniting us in heart, so that we may carry out God's will in the world today, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, that they may have the courage to do what is right and just, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For missionaries, who spread the good news through word and action, that they may be kept safe from harm, we pray. Lord, our For our Jewish brothers and sisters, as they observe Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the holiest day of the year, we pray. Lord, our For those in this community who are suffering and for a renewed commitment to minister to them, we pray. Lord, for all in this community who are sick, for all suffering from COVID-19, and for all on our prayer list, including Michael Austin, for those who have died, we pray. Lord, Merciful God, remember your compassion struggle to do your will. Listen to the prayers we make here today, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
And so we pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all our holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering of bread and wine may find acceptance with you, and through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift them up Let us Lord. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Christ humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. So with the angels and dark angels, thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your promise we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church here on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the people of God. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin but rather on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you. Let us pray. 
May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. I have a few minutes.